what do you like about what you've seen of, uh, of Whitney in the first couple of games you've had him now? Good thing I like about Whitney, um, obviously the experience in the league. You know, he's, his leadership, you know, he's a kid that's, you know, I just didn't say a kid, a grown man that's all bought in. I mean, he's, he's just a great influence to have in the room. You know, you know, a guy like Rashawn that's studied him before in the past, like that stuff we said, you know, three or four weeks ago, or long it's been about, just, he's one of our guys that's been on our iPad, you know, and so that was big for Rashawn. And, um, and just his leadership on the field, you know, what he, what he brings when he's out there. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I was, I was telling Goody those guys the other day, I think all the time I've been in the league, this is one of my favorite free agents we brought in to a building at all places I've been, just because of who he is and what he brings to the table. So I'm very, very lucky and very blessed to have him in our room. Like Z's been back with you guys now for a couple of weeks or whatever. What's, sure. what's it like? What's he doing? What's, what's going on with him back there? Sure, it was just good to see his face. You know, see a smile on his face and just have him back in the building and, you know, him rehabbing and, and getting towards getting back out on the field. And so he's obviously such a big piece of this defense. And, you know, we are better when we're playing good football, but, uh, you know, we'll be better when he's on the field. So um, I'm just glad he's back and back in the meeting rooms and back in the, in the fold of things. You guys got anything else? That's it. Nope. Dinner time. Dinner time. Dinner time. Dinner No, I do actually. Um, <laughs> I'll serve everybody with their phones at me. Button on. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, you guys use a, a, a lot of different rush packages. Sometimes, you know, Vondre, sometimes your inside guys are mugging up. Sometimes you have Merciless up or Rashawn Gary. How much is that of that is, um, Guys knowing each other and, and knowing, reading each other and all that kind of stuff for, for success. Of I think it's part of it and also just the different looks we're trying to give the offense. You know, you always got to think what you did in the past. And then even, you know, we look ahead of who we're playing. You know, a lot of that stuff we might be disguised and the next week might pressure, uh, vice versa. Might be take the chips off the edges, having guys up. I mean, there's there's so much that goes in into that, you know. and and. What kind of quarterback you're playing? He's like to scramble, move around. You want to get more athletic guys out there, right? Um, you know, depend on the offensive lineman. You know, who's the weakest link? Is it guards? Do we want to put our best rusher on the guards? You know, one of our I shouldn't say our best, not our best rusher, but on that on their best, you know, offensive lineman. So there's a lot of things that we we look into. We're trying to create a make sure we overload one side to get a one on one on the other. You know, um, and so that's a lot of that. What that's for. I mean, we've got about seven or eight different. Shoot more than that. Probably ten different, you know, sub fronts that we get into that all have four man, five man, three man look. I mean, it's it's obviously pretty detailed. But um, what's you know what's credit to our guys is you know we've got smart guys and we can do a lot with those guys. And and our linebackers do a great job getting everybody lined up and and uh, and so we can go from there. Like you know, um, you're always really quotable with us, which I appreciate. But I don't know if you uh, can top the. It was like chasing a chicken at a field with no fence that Preston said about. Uh, We're talking about that today, actually. <laughs> oh, were you? Yeah. Um, so, how do you try and fence in that chicken as he comes back into the mix? And you know, obviously, what he's capable of doing, but you also want to get after him. Um, you know, he's obviously he's one of the best in the league. You know, it's funny that you said because we were we were talking about that today. You know, thinking about Russell. You know, I think he's besides Lamar. I think he's a, he's the next best in the league. You know, and he's not an overly fast guy, but he's super athletic. Um, you know, he's bigger than what you think, lower body. He's always ducking down, spinning, giving you the pump fake. Um, you know, he's he's a weapon back there. And you got always got to be aware when you have guys like that when you're rushing. But uh, I think he's one of the elite in the in the NFL behind Lamar of what, what he can do back there and extending plays. And it's important for the back end to plaster with these receivers, you know, when he does get out. You know, we don't want him to get out, but if he does, I mean, there's a reason. You know, we go in it every week. Oh, we don't let this guy out. Well, there's a reason why you pull up the film, and there's seven to ten different scrambles a game against everybody they play. I mean, it's easier said than done. Um, but we got to do our best to keep him in there. You know, and that will change the way that you rush a little bit, you know, because you got to have cautious on, on, on where he's at. But also, you can't rush scared, and that's my biggest thing. When you go in a game and you, you rush scared, and you're just sitting there peeking at the line of scrimmage, looking. You're making it easy for them. And so we've we've got to understand what front we're in, you know, and take calculated risks. 
you know, when we when we get after him. But he's definitely a, a guy that you got to worry about for sure. Mike, what'd you think of uh, you know Gary's sack on Mahomes, and then also how do you think he's kind of responded to having more of an extended you know featured role you know in this defense as opposed to last year was a lot of the, the situational stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think he's responded well. I mean, obviously when you play well and you're doing good things, guys on defense listen to you, and so he's kind of taking a leadership role where you know he's not up there talking all the time, but when he does, guys listen, you know, and and um, you know with this with the sack it was great. I think Rashawn's. You know, like I said, from you know from the beginning, especially this year, I mean he's going to get better and better. So he's setting up his rushes and and he's been, he's baiting that tackle. You know, so he's powering him, getting high and powering him, powering him, and his tackle is open up early and he set him up and we call it our snatch it by. So it's inside number and we we snatch his butt by. So he's baiting the he was baiting the tackle. Um, the two rushes before that, if you watch it, I think the third one before that he got him again on the snatch by, but Pat got rid of it. And this is one of the fastest games Pat got rid of. I think it was two point five on. Or 2.6 on first, second down, third down is 2.5, and that's not Pat. You know, the only time you ever saw him scramble was the last, last one. And so I, you know, I'm pretty sure their whole game plan was for him to stay in the pocket and get rid of it. You know, as I told my guys today, don't get frustrated with that because we see it a lot now. Take that as a compliment. You know, because there's, and again, it goes by. You don't get a lot of, a lot of rushes sometimes, but you never know when you're gonna get that one. And that's the thing about Rashawn. His motor is hot all the time. So, um, but yeah, he's, you know, I couldn't be more proud of Rashawn. Nothing will ever change with that kid. He'll always be the same, humble, hungry, love football, study. Still texting me at 11 o'clock at night. Something's going on with his iPad. This was on Monday because I gave him like a little short run review things, just give him a head start. And it wasn't working properly. So he'll immediately text you. That tells you, and he's, as soon as that game's over, he's on the next opponent. So I'm lucky to be his coach, for damn sure. Mike, when you're facing those uh, scrambling or at least elusive quarterbacks like Murray and, and Mahomes and, and Noel Wilson, uh, you guys rush up the field, outside guys a lot, trying to keep him from getting outside. But what is the moment when, is, is there something they know about when they can go and get him mm -hmm. as to, or is it just a feel? Is it no, we call it leveling off, leveling off on the quarterback. So when we get to level the quarterback, we level off. Sometimes it might be a little bit higher. You know, you see these quarterbacks, you know, like Murray, for example, you level off, but he gives so much ground to get back out. And so it kind of adjusts as every, you know, just every week. Like we have our tackle, I don't want to get too much of this, but our tackle set line where we're pointed uh, makes a 70 degree angle. The quarterback's launch point, we talk about every week. That's what makes where we're pointed at to that four yards behind the near hill of tackle to his launch point. So that helps us judge our rush lanes and then when we can counter. So there's a lot that goes into it, but. You know, some of these quarterbacks like, you know, Murray or even, you know, Pat was so different last week. It was, it was interesting watching them, but um, they give a lot of ground to get out. And there's not much you can do. Even when you watch that last play with Rashawn, I mean, he peeked inside for a little bit. Because like you said, we're contained rushers, but we can't allow those gaps to get open inside. You know, we might have a bubble to us. I mean, there's no three technique and it's easy escape, right? We got to protect that bubble. So you're trying to protect that and not let them outside. And so these running quarterbacks, you know, it's easier said than done. You, you know, people get onto them. Well, you know, damn. You know, get the quarterback, contain them, you let them outside. Well, damn it, you let them come in through that B gap. You know, I can't cuss again. I almost cussed again. I got my butt chewed out last time. But, but, uh, you know, it's just it, it's tough. You know, and but it's our job, and we got we got to do it. And and um, you know, you got to have athletic guys. Luckily, I do. They can they can run these guys down uh, when they do get out. But it was funny on the one where. Murray got outside. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was to the defensive left. And Rashawn missed him, you know, his legs. And it looks like he's about to get him. And Rashawn came to the sidelines. He's breathing hard. He goes, that sucker is fast. I said, oh, yeah, he is. But, uh, um, yeah, so we just call it leveling off on the quarterback, you know, and just having vision. That's why one arm's longer than two. We try to get into one so we can separate and see him. You go into a bull sometimes, you see a lot of guys that bury him. You still want to lock it out, but the line to get on you, you can't get off. So. There's a bunch of different things we do with the running quarterback to try to help when you can. Still only got rushing four and they got five, so there's going to be an open gap somewhere. Got to throw some games in there. You just got to got to mix it up. Good question. Was Rashawn just a second? I think it was Rashawn who hit Mahomes on that play you were talking about uh, the last play. Mm -hmm. Just a sec, just a half second too late. On half second too late. It was a hell of a throw. I mean, obviously Pat does it all the time, but he didn't even plan his feet. He was running full speed when he threw it on the dot. 
and hit Tyreek right in the, in the chest. But that's why he's one of the best in the league at what he does. And so, but that was really the only one that he even tried to scramble on. The rest of them were coming out right now, like we usually see most of the time.